Welcome to video number 27, Random Effect Model, Introduction to Panel Data, Part 3. In my previous video, we, I have discussed Fixed Effect Models and in this video, I am going to discuss Random Effect Model and when we use should use Random Effect Model and when to use Fixed Effect Model. <coughs> so, when the observed variable of interest are constant for each individual, a fixed effect regression is not an effective tool. Because such variables cannot be included, I will discuss this uh, in my sec uh, second part of the video. That, For example, if you are talking about schooling effect uh, of the, the, of for people who have completed their schooling, no, if you uh, monitor them for two time periods, three time periods, four time periods, their schooling will remain same. So schooling effect will not change for those particular individuals over the next five years. So th that effect will be eliminated. <coughs> so uh, in such cases and in some other, uh, with some other conditions, we should consider random effect model. So random effect model is very effective tool provided two conditions are satisfied in panel data. The first condition is that we should have ZP as a random draw, as a random draw. And second, that this random draw, this ZPR, which is basically summarized as alpha i, this alpha i should be independent of xit. So second assumption is that alpha i must be independent of xit. Now you have a compound error here uit where alpha epsilon it are obviously random. If alpha i are random, so uit may be random. If uit may be uh, is random, uh, uit is independent of this. This is only possible if alpha i is independent of x. So two conditions that your zp is a random draw. Second, alpha i and x all x size are independent of each other. If these two conditions are satisfied, we should use random effect model instead of fixed effect model. Why this is the case? Why, what are the merits? We'll discuss in second part of this video. So, <coughs> If this is not the case, it means your alpha i and x i are not, uh, they are correlated with each other and this will lead to uh, bias, uh, inconsistent, bias and inconsistent estimates. So you should use fixed effect model instead of random effect model. Another complication in uh, random effect model is that now you have a compound error term, so you can have autocorrelation across uh, uh, for one individual over time and that will lead to basically uh, non uh, <coughs> the, uh, the, the uh, issue in vari variances, standard errors of the coefficients. So how to overcome this issue? First of all, let's see what happens that you have individual 1, 2, 1, 1 over time period 1, 2 and 3 you have alpha 1, epsilon 1, 1, epsilon 1, 2, epsilon 1, 3. These three are independent of each other. But when alpha 1 is added, alpha 1 is added, alpha 1 is added, these become correlated across uh, over time. Same is case for individual 2, same is case for individual 3 and so on. How to overcome this problem? Uh, <coughs> Uh, 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 you you need to a different estimation technique. You need different estimation technique. And what is that? That is basically you should use uh, feasible generalized least square instead of OLS. That's uh, basically how we estimate random effect models. And uh, uh, the, the, as I mentioned, that we should use feasible generalized least squares. I am not going in these uh, uh, techniques and these technical derivations at the moment. Uh, I am trying just to give you uh, an idea that when to use random effect model, what are the conditions of random effect model, when to use fixed effect model. So here in this case you see that your coefficients if you use OLS are different than fixed effect than random effect. So obviously this, this makes a big difference. So which technique to use, which model to use, that's important and in the next slide uh, we will we'll choose how, uh, uh, how uh, uh, to decide whether to use fixed effect or random effect or OLS. <coughs> 
so you see uh, the, the random effect is in principle more attractive why it's more attractive as i mentioned in the early part that when you have a variable which is uh, basically which remains constant over time that that if a variable is not included in fixed effect model its effect is eliminated it has to be dropped whereas this is not the case in random effect model so uh, i have given you an example of earning uh, uh, regress on schooling schooling will be eliminated for those individuals who have uh, completed their years of schooling over, uh, for next uh, for, uh, for all uh, coming years then second that you uh, uh, have to estimate n minus 1 uh, dummy variables least square dummy variables in fixed effect model whereas this is not the case in uh, random effect model so you save n degree of freedom by using random effect model but please keep it in mind that for random effect model two conditions must be satisfied first zp alpha i is a random draw second alpha i and xit are independent of each other then <coughs> Uh, if your assumption these two assumptions are uh, 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 violated that alpha i and xit are correlated or the z is not a random draw then you should use fixed effect model uh, uh, as i mentioned that first it should be draw randomly secondly that it should be uh, 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 independent of xit no you see if you are talking about oecd countries obviously it's not a random draw from 200 uh, countries of the world similarly we have discussed fixed effect model for 48 us states data those 48 us states are uh, is not a random draw so in such cases random effect models cannot be used so how to test whether alpha second condition alpha it and xit are independent of each other there is a test known as hausmann test hausmann test or durban wu hausmann test if it rejects this that alpha i and xti are not independent of each other then you again cannot use random effect model so if this alpha i is not a random draw or alpha i and xt uh, are not independent of each other then you should not use this random effect model you should use fixed effect model okay uh, this is that alpha it are distributed independent of xit this is the, sec, uh, the hausmann test uh, okay uh, <clears throat> uh, next one is that and it has chi square distribution uh, the chi square distribution we don't go in that if uh, and other uh, and you can use uh, actual number degree of freedom and all these technical issues now you see in this case fixed effect estimates use within group approach and uh, married men and soon married men coefficients are 0.106 0.045 here you this model has the slightly inflated numbers that may uh, 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 create a suspicion that there is some unobserved heterogeneity okay now when we have applied uh, 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 unobserved heterogeneity means some variables should be part of here which which uh, whose effect is captured by the, uh, this one so uh, when we have tested alpha i and xit independent we got test statistics equal to 306 whereas critical value is 34.5 so hausmann test rejects that uh, alpha i and xit are independently distributed so have, we have we have to think about fixed effect models instead of random effect models uh, <clears throat> uh, sometimes this uit is purely random if this uit is purely random there is no uh, correlation uh, auto correlation uh, of so it means uh, you can use uh, then there is a close match between random effect model and ols so in that case if this is the situation that when we should consider whether there are unobserved effects it is possible model has been so well that disturbance term u consists of only the purely random 
if u i t u i is purely random, then you can use pooled O L S instead of using uh, feasible uh, feasible generalized least square uh, uh, instead of using uh, uh, random effect model. So Broch Pagan test and all that we don't go in that detail. Let's come to the last diagram which helps you when to use fixed effect, when to use random effect, when to use O L S. If observations can be described as being random from a given population then you should try both fixed effect and random effect if it's not a random draw like 48 US states data like OECD countries then simply go to fixed effect model if this is the case then again the first condition is satisfied that it's a random draw second condition that alpha i and x i are independent then use this uh, 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 Haussmann test if it passes use it means it if it rejects if it rejects that they, 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 there is a, a null hypothesis then use fixed effect if it does not reject then go again and then again see that UIT is purely random if it's purely random uh, the, the, uh, the, then uh, the, uh, the, uh, does test indicate presence of random effects if yes use random. If it is purely random, use pooled OLS. I hope this will help, uh, help you in uh, uh, determining when to use fixed effect model, when to use random effect model, when to use pooled OLS estimation. I'll try to have workshop on this panel data uh, of fixed effect models, the video number 26 and this video number 27, uh, 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 random effect and I'll show you fixed effect, random effect and how to apply Haussmann test. Thank you for watching. Take care.